Welcome to worship at Hudson Memorial Presbyterian Church. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed your snow days and we're glad that you are with us worshiping online in community. I have three mission-oriented announcements today. The first is our Tend My Sheep offering for January is soup, chili, and canned beans for the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. We also have designated times at the Food Bank for HMPC folks to work if you'd like. Uh, the first is the second Wednesday of the month from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The other is the third Saturday of the month from 9 a.m. to noon. If you'd like to do some of this hands-on service, you can sign up through the link in our weekly window newsletter. The third is a monetary mission offering um, for the service coordinator position at Capitol Towers. Capitol Towers is right across the street and just south of us um, on Six Forks Road. It is a senior living residence. Uh, the service coordinator position was created not too long ago. It helps residents with veterans affairs, health care, therapy, medication management, transportation, and more. And in partnership with Presbyterian Homes, um, we are helping to fund this position, which is helpful to the residents there. So we encourage you to um, serve our larger community with these three options. Also today, as you're worshiping, there is a bulletin available to you. Um, you can link to it on our homepage. We're not doing all the aspects that are in the bulletin because we're purely online today. And then also on our website is the weekly window newsletter. So we encourage you to look at all that's happening in the life and ministry of the church through that weekly publication. So friends, let us move from getting here to being here for worship.
God of God, light of light, true God of true God, we bless you. Object of the Magi's search, subject of any old man's song, fulfillment of the Baptist preaching, we bless you. Mary's son, Joseph's son, God's only son, we bless you. Let us worship God. Our call to confession comes from Psalm 72. God judges the nations with righteousness and answers the poor with justice. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Source of salvation and bringer of light, we fail to sense the mystery of your love. We bear grudges against our neighbors while it is your nature to forgive. We hold tightly to our possessions while Christ blesses the poor. In him you have spoken peace, yet we live in turmoil. We care little for this planet, which you in goodness created for our habitation. In mercy forgive us and help us to amend our ways. The mercy of the Lord is like rain, like showers that water the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you. We extend the peace of Christ to those worshiping with you. If you are worshiping alone, call, text, or email someone the peace of Christ today. This is week three in a sermon series on star gifts. In week one, we looked at the story of the Magi and pondered that God always gives gifts to us first. God gave the gift of a star to the Magi and the Magi responded by following that gift to the ultimate gift of the baby Jesus. You got a star gift in the form of a word on a star, a blue star, a couple of Sundays ago. How will you interact and respond to that word? And by the way, if you weren't able to come on that Sunday, you can come by the church Monday through Friday or next Sunday and pick up your star word. Last week, we looked at Jesus' words. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. I reminded you that the world needs salt and light right now. 
not in an arrogant or self-righteous way, but in a loving way, in being who we are and who we were created to be. So our text today is the classic epiphany text, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 6. But before we listen to those words, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this chance to worship, for this chance to engage your word. May it enliven our spirit. May it deepen our discipleship of you so that we are a light to the world. And all God's people shall say. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 6. Listen for the Spirit's movement in these words. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is some darkness that we're used to. Darkness that doesn't deter or cause anxiety. For example, Katie and I have been in our current house for more than 12 years. When I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I don't need a light. I know the feel and location of everything. It's locked into my mind's eye. The light doesn't need to come on, and I'm comfortable doing this trip back and forth in the pitch black dark. But darkness in unfamiliar locations can be a different story. One of my favorite nights on that ancient pilgrim's path, the Camino de Santiago that I hiked in Spain three times, but um, the experience I'm thinking about now is from 2016 was a night I spent in a hostel run by Italians called Ospedalero St. Nicholas. It was a 13th century building with no electricity. Only eight of us were staying there on that particular night. We had a beautiful dinner by candlelight and an intimate worship service following dinner. But then the Italian host blew out the very few candles that lit up that old building. It was cloudy outside, thus little moonlight, and few windows in that old building. So it was thick darkness. Of course, I had to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and in that thick darkness, I couldn't find my phone to turn on its flashlight. I remember that for a few moments, the darkness almost felt suffocating. I felt like I might have a panic attack. I realized in that moment, so often, I have control of whether it's light or dark. In almost every environment I'm in, I can turn on the lights if I really need to but not in that 13th century old building. For some reason that night, I felt like I could hardly breathe because of that thick darkness. 
Thankfully, my bunk bed was near the front door and I felt my way around the bed, felt the walls and made my way to feel the door and eventually the door handle. I remember getting outside and feeling this great relief, feeling like I could actually breathe again. The thick darkness I've been talking about was a physical darkness. The line in Isaiah verse 6 says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's. Indeed, a different kind of darkness covered the people of Judah, whom this passage addresses. They had been in exile from their land. The temple, the center of their worship life, had been destroyed. The dynasty of King David had come to an unfortunate ending. As commentator Kendra G. Hotz writes, they are, quote, a people without land, temple, or leader. This is the darkness that the people have as a backdrop to the prophet's words. These words were probably written after King Cyrus of Persia was allowing the exiled people to return to their land. But even when the people returned to their land and to Jerusalem in particular, the rebuilding effort was overwhelming. It was a thick darkness. The people were having to rebuild their infrastructure, cultural and religious. And I can't imagine the daily energy and overwhelming nature of that. And this doesn't even include meeting basic human needs such as shelter and nourishment that had to be taken care of for those returning individuals and families. It's into this continued darkness that the prophet speaks the words of our text. Isaiah says to this context, the Lord will arise upon you and the Lord's glory will appear over you. Light has come. Lift up your eyes and look around. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Nations shall come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your dawn. What amazing images and unbelievable things to hope for in light of what they've been through and are presently in the midst of. I was recently troubled by an opinion article I read called America is Falling Apart at the Seams. It was by author and opinion columnist David Brooks. To be honest, it troubled me because David Brooks, in my opinion, is fair-minded, politically moderate, has a strong moral and spiritual compass, and most often is optimistic and hopeful. In this article, based on a variety of troubling American statistics, even Brooks was throwing up his hand saying, what's going on? And I don't have answers for you. Hey, even David Brooks is allowed to have a bad day, a tough opinion piece, and sit in thick darkness at times. And each of us can identify. Sometimes even when glimpses of light appear, we've gotten ourselves into deep ruts, into bad habits, into unwanted routines that are hard for us to break out of. We can't do it alone. We need help getting out of our own thick darkness or the thick darkness that's in our culture. That's why it's so important to remember that God works with communities more than individuals. This is scripturally true. The triune God is community. The triune God works with communities through the Bible and history. 
We see it in slaves wandering out of Egypt, people becoming a nation after their wandering, the remnant of a people coming out of exile and returning to Jerusalem, the people of the new covenant in Christ, and churches being formed. It's community, community, community. It's community because we can't pull ourselves out of thick darkness. We desperately need each other's help. The prophet Isaiah gives an imperative, a must do, at the beginning of Isaiah chapter 60. It says, arise, shine. We are called to be the church in this time and in this place. We are united with the foundation of a communal triune God. This is the God we stand in. This is the God who brings light. We desperately need to support each other right now. We need to extend a hand to help each other arise. We need to encourage each other and tell each other things we see that shine in one another so that we can confidently be who we were created to be for our city and for our nation and for our globe in the midst of any thick darkness we feel we are in the midst of. So here's my challenge for you this morning and today. Think of three people you know of in this church. Reach out to them, text them, email them, give them a phone call, and encourage them. But specifically tell them the ways you see them shine. Three people from this community. Encourage them to continue to use gifts to shine in our city and our nation and our globe. And why do I want you to do this? Number one, because we are community. And we need each other to strengthen our discipleship of one another. Our following of Christ. And number two, our nation needs any servant light that we can bring in humble and loving ways right now. Our nation needs hope. We need the weaving of webs of community and connection and light. So friends, arise and shine for your light has come. Encourage one another so that we are built up to encourage the community we live in. Amen. For the beauty of the
I'm going to share an affirmation of faith on behalf of the community from Isaiah 60, 1 through 6, the message version. Get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light, kings to your sunburst brightness. Look up and look around. Watch as they gather, watch as they approach you. Your sons coming from great distances, your daughters carried by their nannies. When you see them coming, you'll smile, big smiles. Your heart will swell and yes, burst. All those people returning by sea for the reunion, a rich harvest of exiles gathered in from the nations, and then streams of camel caravans as far as the eye can see, young camels of nomads in Midian and Ephah, pouring in from the south from Sheba, loaded with gold and frankincense, preaching the praises of God. And yes, a great roundup of flocks from the nomads in Kadar and Nebaioth, welcome gifts for worship at my altar as I bathe my glorious temple in splendor. Friends, at this time in the service, we encourage you to bring forth God's tithes and your offerings. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and ever-loving God, we come to you today with many things on our minds and hearts, with issues close to home and with conflicts far away. Yet we have faith that you are the interconnected force of light and love. Linger in the minds of governmental leaders who make decisions that may in turn put your children in harm's way, like in Ukraine and Russia. In Yemen, give comfort to those who have just lost loved ones to senseless acts of aggression through air raids and other military action. Give strength to those who continue to pick up the pieces after tornadoes, tsunamis, forest fires, and other natural disasters that have caused physical, economic, and emotional pain. We think also today of those who struggle with mental and physical illness, and for those who are their caregivers. Let your healing spirit flow through their halls and kitchens and living rooms, giving space for unanswered questions and unexpected outcomes. Finally, we ask for endurance, patience, understanding, and perseverance during these unprecedented times of increased apprehension of what the normal might be going forward in a world ravaged by an enemy visible only under a microscope. Give us hope seen in the eyes of a friend. Give us peace felt in the quiet presence of a pet and give us energy through the voice of a parent or child heard over the phone with excitement for the next mealtime gathering. All of these things and others in our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shut 
Be strong and courageous. Stand firm in your faith. Let all you do be done in love. And may you know God's smile and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of us all. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Go in peace.